Hello, my students. I hope you're all well and you're most likely preparing for your examination tomorrow or maybe you're watching this on the morning of your paper or maybe you're just here for the ride in 2026 or 2027. Uh, nonetheless, thank you so much for clicking on this video. And yeah, let's have uh, a good discussion about this paper. You're probably wondering, where's, where's Goon School's cheesy jokes? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm just not in the the nice preppy mood. Life hasn't really been swinging my way lately, but uh, the show must continue. The show must go on. And yeah, here's a nice accounting paper too. A last minute tips video. Yeah, let's get the show on the road. So um, this was taken from one of the more recent papers. I believe it was the latest metric final examination. Um, yeah, this is just the scope of it. Obviously, this is not everything that's going to be in the paper. It's, you're not definitely going to get a debtor's recon in your paper this year or whichever year you're writing. Um, just using this as a bit of a mock breakdown. So um, in your paper, other than a debtor's recon, you could possibly get the infamous bank recon. I've made a couple videos on this. Flea, please, please, flea. Please feel free to check it out. It's a nice bank recon. Uh, the debtor's recon here, it has been examined in this question along with an age analysis. Um, an age analysis, just a, a proper analysis of the period in which you are owed money, you as the business. Like, okay, a good percentage of debtors owe you money between zero and 30 days. Decent portion between 30 to 60 days. And like, oh, just a small portion after 90 days. Whatever it is, something like that. And yeah, you have to analyze it. Remember, you always want your debtors to be paying you as quickly as possible. You want swift payments. Um, you'd much rather get money from your debtors quicker and pay your creditors later to maintain some level of cash cash flow um, and just ensuring that you as the business, you hit all your major liquidity ratios. Uh, we could also get uh, a creditors recon here. Um, so yeah, those are the big three. So it could be bank debtors or creditors recon uh, the age analysis again you might get it you might not um, there is some kind of likelihood uh, and then a nice little vat question um i went through this concept of soco and pedo in a lot of depth yeah i know that's probably not the best best acronym uh, but it really just does get the job done uh, feel free to check out some of those VAT videos. I've discussed it in a lot of depth there. Uh, but yeah, just some last minute tips videos. So these are the things that you should be prepping uh, more or less. Again, with your debtors recon, bank recon, creditors recon, just have a good understanding of your, your formats. Um, you don't have to like memorize it through and through, but just have a solid reading knowledge of it. Um, you'll probably have to just fill in some missing blanks uh, in the answer booklet tomorrow. But yeah, that is about it. Regarding stock valuation, uh, I want to call this just big three. So specific identification, weighted average and FIFO. Uh, so for specific identification, it's typically more like luxury goods. Like if you're selling uh, like super fancy cars, or watches, whatever it is. Yeah, you know, like you're selling different models of Lamborghini. You know, some are more expensive than others. You can specifically identify those products. Uh, and then we've got a weighted average. So, you know, if you're just selling like soccer balls, like you're selling just a bunch of Chelsea soccer balls. All of them are like a hundred bucks, but then you've got United, that's a slightly weaker team or Liverpool, probably the worst team. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Don't come for me in the comments. Um, but yeah, they're all like, you know, of similar values. Like the Chelsea balls, a hundred rand, Liverpool balls, 20 rand, no, I'm joking. The Liverpool balls, like 90 rand. And yeah, between those Chelsea and Liverpool balls, the 10 rand difference is minor. So it's just weighted average all the way through. Uh, and then we've got FIFO. And this is typically more your perishable goods. Like for example, in a supermarket, uh, you want to sell the Albany bread that you bought from, well, Albany a lot quicker than your more recent stock orders. So for example, you want to push out bread faster, push out cheese faster, milk faster. These are all perishable goods, perishable products. They can expire. Okay, and then you get to budgeting. Um, my teacher when I was in matric, bless her soul, um, she has passed away. She was just like, this is just calculator work all the way through. Cash, budget, all those little calculations. It's just, it's just calculator work. It's like a, a spicy maths lit, if I could put it like that. So your cash budget, a projected income statement. Remember, a budget is just a forecast. Um, and, you know, possibly some MCQ questions that could appear in this section all in all. And maybe some internal control questions as well. Maybe something to do with GARP, the prudence concept, you know, just understating all your incomes, overstating your expenses, so we can get a prudent profit amount, something along those lines. And yeah, um, look, from a lot of my private kids, because um, I, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one tutoring as well, I get this whole 
panic attack from a lot of my metrics. Oh, are they going to ask periodic and perpetual ledger accounts? No, but you need to have a, a basic like a reading knowledge of it for stock valuation, I would say. And then we get to cost accounting. Um, nothing too hectic here. You will get a whole PCS production cost statement and maybe an abridged income statement as well um that's like just a short-term income statement abridged is just like a short form like an abridged birth certificate almost and the infamous break even point will be examined as well and just some basic analysis questions so yeah look that is that is pretty much the paper just your big three recons age analysis vat um just your basic manufacturing concepts also having a good understanding here of i would say your direct labor costs direct material costs, DMC, not deep meaningful conversation, uh, factory overhead costs, production cost statement, a bridge income statement, of course the break even point, just looking at budgeting again, definitely something to do with the cash budget or projected income statement. It is it is basically just calculator work. I'm just gonna put their CB for cash budgets and projected income statement and just any internal control questions that could come with this, maybe even something to do with audit processes. Uh, you could have some minor depreciation or even an asset disposal calculation somewhere here. Again, reading knowledge of perpetual and periodic stock systems, FIFO, weighted average specific identification, and just, again, like ethical behavior. So yeah, look, this is not really a, a heavy paper, I would say. But then again, maybe that's me being like a toxic examiner <laughs> or toxic educator or other like... Yeah, I mean, of course, this is going to be a difficult paper, but comparatively, students typically score score better here in, in paper two than paper one. But again, it, it depends on the school. It depends on how it was taught to you, how well prepared you are. So yeah, you know, don't go into it thinking, oh, this paper is going to be easy or this paper is going to be too difficult. Just really prep as, as well as you can. That's it. So yeah, when it's pens down eventually, most of you finish your exams with like Afrikaans paper two or consumers or hospitality. When it's pens down, I just I want you to head into your 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 vac, your vacation in a space where it's like I've done absolutely everything I possibly could in my matric final examinations. Like I've prepared adequately. I didn't leave anything too last minute and I've done the best that I possibly could, because let me tell you that pain of regret, it, it is hard to stomach. It's extremely, extremely hard to just get down. And yeah, you, you can't really have a, a good December, a nice, you know, time on rage or in the jaws or, I mean, maybe you're not about like that life. Maybe you just want to take walks in the park and kiss your dog in December. Maybe it's that. It's hard to do anything like that. It's hard to really function properly and have a good time when you know, yeah, you haven't given it your all and probably the most important uh, academic year maybe in your life. Remember, Matric, it, it doesn't decide your future. By no means does it decide your future. But probably a short-term future yeah matric does have a lot to say if you want to go off and study if you want to work take a gap year whatever then matric is just kind of like a, a formality but if you're really like setting out to do big things academically and you want to study something crazy yeah please give it your best so yeah this is a more <laughs> a more centered goon school i'm not my usual crazy crazy self let me know how you guys found it maybe, maybe you like it when i'm just like down to earth and like fully fully like my academic self a lot of students like it when i break it up with you know some crazy bad dad jokes uh, but yeah a lot of you just complain in the comments oh good school you're wasting my time I win, I get, get. yeah that's that's what i get a lot of the time <laughs> but yeah uh, again thank you so much for watching the video i really appreciate it thank you for subbing thank you for your likes thank you for the love that you've shown me um yeah, it's been a pretty crazy period after my dog passed away. Yeah, it's like losing a member of the family. Trust me, I would have much rather put a couple of other of my family members on the chopping block than my, my poor little pup. But yeah, she, she did live a good life. She was she was like 14 or so, 14 and a half years old. But I, I wish she could have gone for more. But yeah, thanks for watching. Good luck for your examination. I believe in you.